Okay, I'm fucking freezing. <sighs> I'm having a real rough time looking at this face and being like, this body looks fucking nothing like me right now. Okay. <sighs> I'm kind of feeling a bit like, like I don't really have a sense of self or identity. And I'm also struggling to like, I don't really know, like, I can't really make sweeping statements because it's too complicated for that. But I'm starting to become curious about identity and how that, how I interpret myself, I guess, my ability to see myself and feeling my emotions in my body and retaining a sense of self and identity at the same time and how often that happens if that happens or if those two things like I, I kind of feel like I kind of feel like some parts of me had a stronger sense of self, have a stronger sense of self. But either less connection to emotions or only connection to specific emotions like anger and pain. And, and then I also feel like a lot of parts of me really have like a very blurry very depersonalized, like not solid, not concrete, shifting like sands, not tangible, amorphous sense of self, but no connection to emotions. It's, it's really fucking confusing. And I'm kind of noticing it and wondering like, you know, what the fuck is going on there? between my identity, my sense of self, the different parts of me, my connection to what I'm feeling. And also like noticing that when we go front, maybe when we co on as well, If I can, f if I can, if we have good connection between us and I'm able to feel what I feel in my body and you see me clearly because like it's easier to look at each other and I see you a lot more clearly than I see myself. Yeah, that makes sense. Same. And I feel like if you're co-fronting or co-con with me, I can focus on just feeling what I'm feeling in the body and kind of let, let go of searching for or trying to hold an identity. But if you can share what you're feeling and seeing with me, then I kind of get a clearer view of myself by proxy, by how you're seeing and interpreting me. And then I end up with both, like quite, quite, um, coming from different places so one doesn't seem to push out the other it's like it's really hard to describe exactly what I'm experiencing and I have not had enough sleep and it's been a really rough day and I'm very tired it's a great time to try I know you know but I feel like I feel like there's something to this oh 
I'm so tired. I'm thinking about it a lot. I'm kind of invisible to myself. But if I'm feeling what you're feeling and seeing how you're perceiving things and you're interacting with me, I feel like I just, I'm not looking at myself through you. I just, I just know. I just, I feel confident in my sense of self, of who I am. It feels consistent. It looks recognizable to me without me having to focus on looking at it. It's like, it's just, it's my, yeah, my sense of self of who I am just seems to be there. But I feel like it's coming from you. Oh, it's so confusing, man. I'm thinking about that. We just had therapy. We got the letter kind of like, we discussed with her what the NHS might need to be able to refer us to this clinic and fund it um, and what sort of things she could help write. We learned that it's coming up for three years. So we've never been sure exactly without going through old journals, which like there's so much stuff in it, but it's like, it's a minefield, it's a fucking minefield of triggers. Really glad that we have them recorded. Also, I can't just go looking through old journals. Not right now, anyway. So, we kind of didn't know, like, exactly when we started therapy. But we do now, and it's the 15th of April, 2020. So it's coming up for three years in therapy. And it was Wednesday at 12.45. <laughs> Incidentally, the first session. Damn. There's so many different things that have to be there, like, for me to have a sense of self, really. Because it, it if you're not near me or if I'm not able to connect with you, either of those things would shut it off. And then I'm like, is this just how we work? I'm always frankly kind of pleasantly surprised image you have of me. What's weird is like, I picture what I look like inside, and this body really fucking throws me, but not when, not when you're looking at me. <laughs> when you're looking at me, somehow it's easier to see that this body, and I don't look anything like me, but I can see almost overlaid the way the face moves when I'm in it. I recognize it from how I move inside. But I guess through you, because you probably spend more time looking at me than I do. Unless you spend an awful lot of time in front of a mirror. <laughs> this kind of natural and the normal thing, I realize. I think statistically speaking, other people are more likely to know what your face looks like than you and spend more time looking at your face than you. I think that's probably quite common, yeah. <sighs> it's so wildly reassuring that, like, I can't. I can't predict what you're going to say before you say it. I... If 
like I have no idea where you're going at the start of your sentence. Like sometimes as listening with anybody, I'm like, oh, I think I'm following, you know, before you get to the end of it. But generally you get to the conclusion and like, I couldn't have predicted it going there. And it, there's something about that that is so reassuring when denial is being a bitch. That it just... And the fact that I have no idea what it would actually feel like right now to be sitting as just one person in this body, I realise. Because, <laughs> yeah, it moves differently to you. Like, your eyes look different to mine. Like, the movement of this body is... You're moving independent of me. I can, I can feel that, like... And, yeah, I feel you sat inside next to me. And I'm aware of what you look like. The whole sense of your presence, the weight of your movements, like... I have no idea what it would be like to not feel that. Apart from in host parts of me where isolated, desolate, lonely, horrifying, and kind of like void because we spent a lot of time in the front together but not realising well, like at least I I didn't know that we were fronting at the same time in those parts of me because I could not feel anything but that was more like it wasn't like you weren't there looking back but I did have no idea. It was heavier than you not being there, but like, I wouldn't have known. Man. I'm thinking. you perceive me and then how that becomes a felt sense projected from you onto me. I feel much more comfortable and much more secure in myself of how I look and how I sound when you're there like I'm invisible to myself if you're not listening to me and I'm connected enough to you to what perceive myself through you. I'm not sure what's going on. But I appreciate it. And it feels a lot more stable and secure. I'm thinking about this for like everything you feel. so much. I, I'm so tired. And I, I don't know if you personalize my, like not really personalize, but like, I don't want to make it more clinical, less personal what I'm talking about when I talk about emotions. So it's not like they just work as system mechanics. But do we just... What do I feel? And why is it so fucking confusing? And is it just system mechanics of the brain learning how to perceive itself and interact? Because it doesn't feel like just that. Person. I can see you very fucking clearly. 
not about trying to make me able to see myself or make it worth everything. My little life story I'm doing is pretty fun. And that stupid fucking video we watched earlier that like I have a lot of real mixed feelings about. There were a lot of really interesting points. The morals and ethics are fucking shady and I've read points from either side but my gut feels really uncomfortable with a lot of the ways that things were phrased and done. And it's making some parts of me feel like like that thing that happens to me where I perceive everything under the view of like say abusive assholes would have seen it. It's like Ah, good, now I'm looking at everything I say and do under the lens of how much, how everything he said, if you do it like this, this means you're not, like, how do you put it? Imitative DID versus actual DID. I might be butchering it because I am so tired and I haven't slept enough and I've forgotten the large amounts of it anyway. But I'm uncomfortable with the fact that he basically was like, yeah, overt systems don't exist. He didn't say it in those words. But like, I know our experiences and I know that this is just how we are. Like, it was when we were kids. You sounded and acted really different then too. And so did Connor, so did Midnight. This is a report in that folder of the fact that Midnight came in and lounged across the back of the sofa and had a tail clipped to what we were wearing and like we've all always been pretty overt like we just have I don't know why but that is what is healthy and natural to us and if we try to inhibit that or tone that down it feels dismissive and invalidating and it can shut us down a lot because it's not who we are so like who we are and how we are is just naturally how we are and I don't believe that we're the only system that's like that so like there's a lot of the stuff in his video that made me feel kind of pissed off because it's like I don't know how you're gonna so distinctly discerningly say this absolutely never happens when I know it does because it's our experience and ours can't be the only experience so it's like it seems so black and white which is such a problem with trauma anyway that I was like why in why when talking about a trauma disorder is there no room for grey area or nuance like I don't know I was uncomfortable with a lot of that and the ethics of using videos of systems to say I don't know about these people like you couldn't sit and diagnose somebody off of one TikTok or even all of the TikToks on their channel but you're going to list these people when showing what traits of people who don't have DID are implied to maybe look like it's that's fucked and then also I feel like what he was saying had a bias like there was a lot that was interesting but there was just these bits that I'm like man I was really uncomfortable with them I tried to sit with them and be like you know what feels threatening to me and I there is there is fake claim trauma that we have that I'm sure got triggered because it's why my brain's like oh no I have to like think about how what I'm saying doesn't come up on his criteria but I'm reminding myself that I think his criteria is wrong and like not really nuanced enough for the way that this can work because if he's basing it off of uh, what's the sample size of the people that he's working with that he has worked with of the study of and what 
generation are they from and how people behave in a clinical setting has got to be different to the way people behave on their own social media account maybe after becoming more comfortable on it so like is it possible that it's just how does DID present through social media rather than like I feel like what he was saying had a clear bias of saying if it's presented through social media it's not DID whereas I would be more curious to be like how does what we know about DID change and interact with social media how does it present how does it present through different generations do people like throw themselves into radical acceptance of it and therefore behave differently to what I've seen in different generations as the world moves forward so like how do people because social media has an impact on how we behave and that's going to have an impact on how systems behave but it's going to interact with the very many symptoms that we live with as well so it's like I just didn't feel like there was really enough room for nuance. I felt a bit too black and white for me. I am aware that I'm not a professional, but like, it's what my gut felt. And. weird. I felt a lot of different emotions watching that video that I'm going to talk about when I have more sleep. I, I felt so many attacks of denial and threat and like fear of denial. Like I was waiting constantly for somebody to go, aha, the things that I think are symptoms are not symptoms and that's your reality is disproven. But then anger because it's like, that's not possible because our reality is what our reality is. Like, our reality isn't changed to fit criteria one way or another. It just is. And then like, I'm pissed off because it's like the people whose TikToks were used That would be painful to be used in that way when somebody doesn't know like to just take one or two videos and be like this calls into question the legitimacy of your symptoms because they don't fit with the clinical presentation that I'm used to instead of you know, I don't know any of the other questions. It's so and then I felt a lot of relief, honestly. Like a lot of really soothing, really validating, fucking kind of shocking, and then triggering of the den denial immediately. So, like, it generated a lot of resistance in me on both sides and a lot of relief and a lot of just pure confusion because like we hit I don't know if it was exactly or pretty much exactly because I can't fucking remember the video now but like I know that I watched through it going oh my god yeah that's like a full bingo we according to his criteria which I'm not sure how much I do or don't trust my interaction seeing this guy so you know it's fuck all I know about what he does and says but my my gut definitely didn't like his presentation of what things meant in absolutes but um in his intense world of high criteria absolutes <sighs> oh, that sentence didn't no, whatever i expected like the denial and the imposter syndrome went off and I expected to be like this is going to make me doubt my legitimacy as 
knowing that we're a sister but it actually did the opposite and like everything that almost the, the only one thing that like everything that would put us in line for having a diagnosis of DID we fucking had and everything that people would do if they didn't have DID was not relatable to our experiences so that was like a massive relief and also massive resistance and it, it made the denial like a bit worse actually and Ah, oh, a lot. The only thing that I think went against what he said was him saying like, I can't remember how he said it, something like you're not going to see, I don't know if our switches are particularly noticeable, like in and of themselves, but that you're not going to see like overt behaviours and traits and different clothes changed, but like, I don't see why you wouldn't, because we like to feel like we can recognise the body when we front and I don't see why other people wouldn't feel the same way it just feels really fucking uncomfortable to, like I'm quite uncomfortable right now because this is more like his hairstyle than mine looks good on you <laughs> now that wasn't a complaint but like I don't recognise myself and it's really fucking with me if I had the energy I would straighten my hair and do stuff that makes me feel more like less because otherwise I space the fuck out and I get really depersonalised so like, I don't see why that wouldn't be a thing. Like we don't always do that, but if I want to feel fucking comfortable and I have the energy, I will. And it just seems normal to me that you would. And then like that there's not going to be overt differences between people, but like there is, there are, like there always has been as far back as I can remember being like at least what, three and Again, I don't think our experiences are going to be like, maybe they're not the most normal. I think covert systems are like a lot more likely, but it kind of counters for itself online anyway, because if you're an overt system, I think you're more likely to post things online just because of the nature of like, you know, the things that lead to you being overt as a system lead to you being overt in your behavior generally, because maybe that kept you more safe, or maybe it's nature nurture, or maybe it's genetic, like, I don't know, but clearly that does happen, so it's kind of weird to see somebody being like, this isn't going to happen. Although, I did notice that, like, it was weird, between parts of me, I feel like switches are more covert like I don't necessarily notice when that happens unless I'm watching back a vlog and I'm like oh shit I either completely forgot like I don't remember saying this or more and more these days oh my voice just totally changed my mannerisms just changed and but I don't notice it at the time and I feel like it's a more subtle shift but between us as that's just between parts of me but between us as different alters of the systems it's always been it's always been over it was like it's it's <sighs> people have been fucking assholes about it our whole life because it looks really obvious and we can't cloak with each other's voices mostly we found a couple of people can now, but like mostly we've never been able to, so these things are all swirling in my head, along with our much more intensive, much more like what do I feel? What am I feeling? Have I ever been able to know? What am I feeling right now? And how much is mechanics? How much is I as a person and, and feeling this for you as a person? How much is just the mechanics and the self interacting through identity fragmentation? Like, 
can't all be because again I think of who you are as a person and I definitely think of you look like how you behave and I'm so tired oh my god fuck fuck 